Currency Pro Part 3, what drives currency movements and how to determine if they're attractive investments. At the highest and simplest level, currency movements are driven by supply and demand. The more demand there is for a currency, like foreign investments into that country's stocks and bonds, or buying of that country's exports, the more it'll go up. The more supply there is, like money printing, the more it will go down. However, actually predicting these things can be fairly challenging in practice. As a general rule, investing in currencies is more difficult than investing in stocks or bonds. Unlike a bond, where the returns are usually known in advance as long as you hold in maturity and they don't default, or a stock where you can analyze their profit growth and future opportunities, currencies are often driven by both market forces and politics, so they're really hard to predict. And remember, currencies are always priced relative to a different currency. So it's not just things in that country that impact a currency's value, things in other countries impact it too. For example, when I invested in the 2X Yen ETF, it came after a period where US interest rates had risen a lot more than Japanese interest rates in 2022. Both Japanese and US government bonds have similar risk. So the higher interest rates, AKA higher return potential on US bonds made them more attractive than Japanese bonds. That drove Japanese investors to buy more US bonds, which was also buying the US currency or the US dollar. Remember, when you buy assets in a foreign country, you're also buying the currency. So that extra demand for the dollar coming from the yen had strengthened the dollar against the yen a lot. My basic thesis for buying the yen ETF was not so much about what might happen in Japan. I mean, that was part of it, but mainly it was that over the next two to three years, the US was likely to lower interest rates a lot, bringing them back closer to Japanese rates, thus making Japanese bonds more attractive and driving investment flows back the other way into the yen. This gap between the interest rates is called the interest rate differential. Essentially, the interest rate differential had widened a lot in 2022, strengthening the dollar. And I thought the interest rate differential was likely to narrow again, strengthening the yen. Often, there are many conflicting forces driving currency valuations, so they can be hard to predict. They're also a great example of John Maynard Keynes' quote in practice. Markets can stay irrational longer than you can stay solvent. There's an excellent book out there called When Genius Failed that's about the downfall of a hedge fund called long-term capital management. Essentially, that's what happened to them. They took on a ton of leverage to buy Russian government bonds because they thought they were cheap. In the long run, they were right but they were years early and they went bankrupt before the prices of the Russian bonds recovered. Currencies often work like this. You can think they're mispriced and you can be right, but they can stay mispriced for a long time. That's the main risk with investing in currencies. I'm not saying you should never invest in them. Obviously, since I bought a 2X yen ETF and I'm making this video, but it's important to keep that in mind if you're going to. In my next video, I'll cover how inflation impacts currencies and how currencies impact inflation. That's another big driver of currency values, especially in emerging markets. And by the way, this is a 10 part course that's gonna roll out over five weeks on YouTube. But if you want access to all 10 parts right now without clicking around YouTube or watching ads, check out the link below. Thanks for watching.